know, just, uh, they're playing in a great groove uh, right now. Um, you know, the, the win streak, uh, you can see that they're playing confident basketball, um, starting to play more connected offensively. Um, and they do enough things defensively, um, you know, to keep you off balance. What defensively would you try to take away first off? Well, for us, it, it just has to be, again, we're, we're process oriented. So it's, it's going to be about our habits, um, you know, the checklist of things that uh, we want to get very solid at. Um, it doesn't change no matter who we're playing. I mean, obviously, there's some bigger challenges with, you know, uh, elite level uh, playmakers, um, you know, like uh, LeBron and, and the three-point shootings that they have. But, uh, but we've got we've to protect that paint. Um, we've got to contain them in transition, and uh, we have to be able to to get to the three-point line, get uncomfortable, get get those guys off their their open threes. All, all of it is easier said than done, but these are the habits we're trying to build. If you need him to go all four quarters tonight, could it sign up? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Okay. yeah. He could have gone the other night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eric, when you talk about protecting the paint and the way they're starting with Kevin Love now, how do you sort of weigh the positive and negatives of just having a son chase versus protect paint? I assume you're not going zone, so how do you sort of weigh that? Yeah, when you're uh, play uh, again, it's uh, about your habits um, and the, the challenges when you have elite level playmaking. But uh, virtually every single night, um, you're going against a, some kind of space shooting five. Uh, so Miles Turner, Al Horford, uh, Towns, uh, the list goes on and on, okay? Um, so it's not a big shock. <laughs> you know, you're pick and roll coverage. You, you're, you have to rely on your habits. Um, all of those are just excuses. Um, if if uh, you want to feel sorry for yourself that there's going to be a shooting five, I think that's what makes the game interesting. There's different kinds of players, um, different kinds of challenges. Uh, we have a system in place. It will get challenged. That's what it's about. You have to, to stay, uh, stay connected and stay disciplined to what you do. To that end, though, you did play justice on town, so... How much do you concern yourself with cross matches? Coaches a lot of times worry about getting back, or how much do you just want to go ahead and just uh, align your five guys in the way you want to go? Yeah, I mean, you played a, we played Hassan against Horford. Mm -hmm. um, so each game is different. Um, you, know, you just have to, to do what, uh, um, what's important to you, regardless of, of who you're playing. So cross matches will be a part of it. Uh, it's a part of, uh, of the NBA game right now. Um, we're, we think we're getting better with it, uh, but the point is we'll be challenged tonight, um, and that's what you want as a competitor. Now we have some things that um, that challenge them as well. Um, we want to make sure that we're trying to maximize that um, on the other end, um, and that's what makes uh, these kind of games, you know, compelling for for fans. Eric, you've spent so much time around Dwayne throughout his career. Why do you think the six-man backup point guard role suits him so well? I think any role that has to do with winning suits him. Um, you know, that's what he's been about his whole career, um, and it shows the kind of kind of guy that he is, that he's willing to sacrifice um, in this role to provide something different than he's done um, before in his career, and you can see that uh, that he's playing that well, that role well. You faced Dwayne in Chicago and LeBron in Cleveland. You never played against them together at the no. same time. Does that stir up anything in you? Um, not now. I mean, uh, yeah, when you see these guys in, in different uniforms, it's always like, Really, <laughs> that, that looks strange. But uh, you know, the, the, this league changes um, year to year. So we've been through a myriad of changes in the last uh, five years. Um, a lot of new faces here. I, I love the team that we have in that locker room. Um, I love going to work every single day with this group. Um, you know, when I see guys that uh, there's there are very few men, very few now <laughs> that were with us back then. Um, when I see them, it's it's always it's always nice. Um, you know, to have that split second going back memory lane, but um, but my focus is, is with the, these guys in here right now. That, that split second, second though, that, yeah. excuse me, that, that split second though, the four years you had kind of just being in the pressure cooker. Yeah. Uh, how has that uh, informed the rest of your career since? Yeah, I, I think all those experiences hopefully make you better. Um, you know, I think it made all of us uh, more resilient, uh, thicker skin. We're able to just. Uh, Zero in and focus on the things that matter, and and, and tune out everything else. Uh, that becomes a muscle, like anything else. It's like going into the weight room the first time you do it. Um, it's uncomfortable uh, being in that environment, and uh, now being in something like this uh, doesn't even phase you at all. And more importantly, after a loss or when it gets tough, it gets a little bit uncomfortable that, that you build that muscle. How does Dwayne's game compare now to when 
three, four, five years ago? Uh, it's different, and you can look at it every chapter of his career. Uh, it's different. Um, he can still give you those bursts of, of explosiveness, um, but uh, he can just as much beat you with his mind. As a fan of the game in general, is it fulfilling or redeeming in some capacity to see these guys like LeBron and Dwayne still playing at this level at 33 and 35? As Not that it's the same as it was when they were 27 and 31, but still playing at such a high elite level at this game? I think it's great for, for this league. Uh, it shows you that uh, you can play at a high level if, if you do the right things off the court. Um, but it's a, uh, these are messages we pass along to our young players as well. You can extend your career if that means more money. You can also play the game you love for a lot longer than you could 25 years ago. Um, but you have to make sacrifices. You have to take care of your body. You, you can't be out all night. Uh, you have to eat the right things. Um, you have to be uh, very diligent and disciplined um, in the weight room, corrective exercises, all these things. There's a map now for players to play at a high level for a long period of time. Most players aren't willing to do the things that are necessary to do that. Do you feel like in a way these guys made that map? Um, given the technology and the, and the information we have today? Yeah, everybody's now gaining from sci sports science. Sometimes that can be a negative uh, term, but um, there's, there's a lot to be learned, and there, there still will be some new frontiers. Um, certainly in this, uh, the last few years, there are great examples of it, but there are examples uh, back when Pat was coaching. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know, guys, uh, guys like that, uh, but he did a lot of things that were unique and um, different than, than most players at that time. Um, and I, I think you're seeing that uh, league-wide, uh, I think the, the pro basketball player is taking care of his body uh, much more than he was uh, before. Coach, as you led the two of them together over those four great years, LeBron and Dwayne, now as you have to game plan against them, what, what's the challenge? What's that challenge? Look like? it's, that's the life of, uh, in the NBA and the life of an NBA coach. Um, so uh, you have different challenges, great challenges uh, every night. What, what we see is the top team in the East, uh, they're not there right now, but to, if you want to go somewhere in the East, uh, this team, they're not going anywhere, <laughs> okay? So you, you're going to have to knock them off at some point. Um, that's what competitors want. You want to be part of games like this. Here, Dion's growth, obviously, maturation. How different is he now than when he left Cleveland? I don't know. I didn't know. Um, you know, Chris Quinn, uh, Wayne Ellington, uh, they would be good guys to ask. They actually talked about that recently, both of them saying how much he's grown and we think our culture, <coughs> our, our system, uh, and his openness uh, to us, uh, that really has been a symbiotic relationship. We're not for everybody. We're not. Um, but he's, uh, I love the strides that he's making. Um, he's in great shape. Uh, he's learning how to really become a winning player. Um, I, mean, I can't wait to see where he, where he goes from here. Yeah, Coach LeBron shooting percentage is the highest in his career this year. So when you watch the tape, tape everything, you see difference what he did this year. Um, I see a great player. Every time I see him, I see a great player. So um, I never got into any of those uh, other storylines if it was different. He's, he plays at an elite level all the time. Yeah. I, I know this sounds really goofy, but I'm asking for somebody who's not here. Mm. When Draymond was a rookie. Uh, you guys had a game against them where he hit the shot in the last second to beat you. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, the slip pick and roll. Yeah. I have to no, think about that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was ruined by, uh, ruined by New, New Year's. That, <laughs> but, uh, that was kind of yeah. like his coming out party. Him and LeBron were drawing a little bit back and forth that night. What do you, what yeah. do you remember about that night? Obviously. Curry coming off on uh, a catch and shoot at that time. You just didn't see the level of shooting of guards. Um, as I, I don't, nobody has an answer for that still to this right. day. But what they were doing at that time was, uh, was it, it was what, wow, okay, <laughs> what are we supposed to do on that? I don't know, slip and lay up and, okay, well, at least our next opponent doesn't have two guards that shoot like that <laughs> and come off screens. <laughs> That's what I remember about that. All right, guys, thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.